Hey, Pan. Hey, Marta. I was gone. What's up, guys? Ah, it looks like my comments are working. Finally. Hey, Robin. How's it going, everybody? Hope your 4th of July weekend, if you're in North America or United States, is going well. Hey, Karen. Sweet. So it looks like I'm not going to have to use the computer because for whatever reason the technical issues that I have was resolved. So um, I think I'm, I'm going to do like a little bit of a rant today. A friend of mine who is a fellow medium sent me a link to a video where um, a, a very well-known New Age blogger and I think his name was Steven Bankara or, or something along those lines, hey Patty, um, who had a huge following, sort of created a stir, I don't know, maybe a year or so ago, when he denounced all of his teachings and, and such and um, became a born-again Christian. And uh, it's funny that this came up, you know, last night I was... Um, watching the movie on Netflix, I Am Michael, with uh, Zachary Quinto and James Franco, and so there sort of seems to be this theme that's been popping up around me of people kind of reverting back to um, former belief systems and abandoning belief systems that they have. And then I know just a couple months ago, you know, Doreen Virtue, who's kind of the queen of the New Age, Love and Light, and Angels movement, um, has become a born-again Christian and denounced a lot of her former teachings and materials and is very pro-Jesus. And I just wanted to share a few thoughts that I had about that. So first and foremost, I have no issue with any religion that anyone chooses or any belief system that anyone chooses to follow. I myself was raised Pentecostal um, in a very charismatic, old-fashioned Pentecostal church. You know, the women had long hair, they wore dresses, the men wore pants, people were, you know, speaking in tongue and slain in the spirit, and, and you know, they believed very much in the concept of salvation. So I understand those teachings, and I understand those philosophies. Um, however, I left the church at 17, and, and I've identified as a spiritualist pretty much ever since. Um, so I'm just looking at, you know, a couple of these more known cases that have come up of the Stephen character and um, Doreen Virtue because this, this friend of mine asked me my thoughts. So I'm going to share them with you. Um, you know, this, this Stephen kid made a ton of money off of, you know, his blogs and his websites and um, a lot of these New Age teachings, you know, Doreen Virtue has literally made millions off of her teachings and Oracle card decks and books and the Ascended Masters and Varies and all of this sort of stuff, you know, that I personally don't resonate with, but um, a lot of people do. And the thing about it is, as I've said, I have no issue what a person believes as their truth, but the thing that really irritates the shit out of me when someone jumps the Jesus train is that they then turn and start condemning those who haven't jumped the same train. And that to me is just so hypocritical. You know, you look at these, these two characters individual and uh, individually and they've made tons of money off of, you know, this, this new age concept or, or some of the more um, ephemeral spiritualities. And I wonder, you know, it really makes me pause and think, okay, if this is so wrong, if this is so evil, if there's this deception here from these satanic or demonic forces, I bet you're still driving a really nice car. 
I bet you're still living in a really nice house that was paid for off of those unicorns and fairies and aliens and things of that nature. So that's one of those things that, that really drives me crazy um, and really irritates me. But the thing about it, too, you know, is that I was watching this video from the 700 Club um, interviewing this kid. And, you know, he talks about how he was involved in New Age, but he never really felt completely happy, and I've heard, uh, you know, Doreen Virtue say that she felt like her life was never really together until she found Jesus, and, and you know, all these sorts of things, and they, they had their conversion. And one, you know, like this kid, Stephen, he had, he, he claims he had this, you know, out-of-body experience where he saw this demonic figure with red skin and, and black markings on the face, and to me, that's, you know, as someone who has, has been steeped in the world of spiritualism for as long as I can remember, you know, even, even when I was a part of the church, I've never seen anything negative, scary, or evil. I've never seen anything, you know, demonic. And it seems very much to me like you had a bad dream and you chuck your entire belief system because you had a bad dream and then you jump on the next thing. And it's like when someone has... Uh, claiming themselves to be an authority figure of something and then like that completely flip to the other side that to me tells me that that person or those people are someone who really aren't genuinely or authentically aligned with those belief systems to begin with it shows me that they're not grounded in their truth to start with and if you can flip that easily or you know if you're so easily influenced it shows that you don't really know who you are you don't really know who you are and you're looking and if you don't know who you are then you have no business trying to help other people find who they are you know I, I when I see things like this it just illustrates to me I see this with both of these people that I've mentioned I don't think that these are people who are necessarily the most mentally or emotionally grounded or the most mentally or emotionally stable otherwise they probably wouldn't be in these transitory periods now that's not to say that we as people can't grow and that doesn't mean that our belief systems don't evolve but when I hear these these people who are these former New Age leaders say things like you know my life was never together or, or I always seem to have bad luck or I always felt like something was missing or I was you know, searching for myself and then I found Jesus and everything's better I gotta call bullshit I really do I really have to call bullshit because if you weren't happy then your happiness from this new path that you think is the right thing and maybe it is maybe it isn't for them is a temporary fix it's a band-aid but you have to look at the deeper shit that's underlying that made you not happy in the first place. You know, one of the things that I love about spiritualism that makes me not afraid to say I'm a spiritualist is the fact that they put emphasis on personal responsibility. It doesn't matter what guide, what angel, what Jesus, what God, what whatever you have, it doesn't matter their influence on your life, if you're not doing the self-work, if you're not working on your own happiness, if you're not dealing with your own shadow, if you're not doing the self-work, if you're not walking your own line, if you're not taking care of your own issues, you can't escape personal responsibility or shove that shit onto any deity from any path to fix things or make things better. You are here and you have to fix things and you have to make things better and you have to have peace with yourself as you go to sleep at night and that's not to say that we all aren't going to have hard stuff in our life and challenges no matter what path we're on but again my path is my path and your path is your path but don't start don't start demonizing another person's path because it didn't resonate or work well for you um, hey Jessica I have a hard time finding my path, but I do get distracted. I get a goal and I get distracted. Um, distraction's easy in the world that we live in. Everything is fast-paced. People want things very quickly. Um, there is nothing wrong 
with being in the place of seeking. There's nothing wrong with being in the place of searching. And part of spirituality that I wish people would keep in mind is that there's no end game. There's no finish line. Um, we're ever growing, we're ever changing, we're ever evolving. You know, things that I believe today, I may not have believed five years ago, and things that I believed five years ago, I don't believe today. Come on. Sorry, my dog's just wanting to sit up here. Say hi, Juby. He doesn't care. Um, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with saying this doesn't resonate with me and setting it aside. Um, I personally believe that we all come from the same source and no matter which route we take, we all return to the same source. But regardless of what path we take, no one can do the work for us. Whether they're a spirit being or a physical being, like a guru, you have to do the work. And you have to be the one who's at peace with yourself every day in your life. Know your truth. Know yourself. That's the problem you know, with a lot of these people who jump trains like this in such a huge dramatic and public way they don't know themselves because if they knew themselves they would know their truth and it wouldn't be able to shift or change so dramatically or so easily now as i've said i have nothing against christianity um for those who want to practice it but again like with these leaders don't don't start demonizing or don't start um you know convicting people because their path isn't aligning with your own. The New Age movement itself stemmed from theosophy. Madame Blavatsky, Annie Besant, you know, um, Alice Bailey. And theosophy, I don't know if technically it would be considered a religion, but it's a movement, a philosophy that draws from, or that drew from, I should say, that drew from spiritualism, that drew from Christian mysticism, and that drew from Eastern mysticism, and it sort of blended together. So it's ironic to me, like for example, you know, um, the Stephen Kidd and, and Doreen Virtue have mentioned sort of these dark entities, and, and both of them who, who before we're all sort of this love and light, start talking about hell and stuff like that. But even then, from that Christian perspective, if you start looking biblically from a research perspective, if you start looking from a common sense perspective, putting the, the sort of the theology or the magic sort of stuff aside and just start looking at translation and and how these these books came into being, um, there's nothing that really negates the elements of, of spiritualism or New Age, and in fact they're more similar than they are dissimilar minus the dogma. The big thing that gets me is, even if you are a, a practitioner of the Christian faith, um, you know, if you're a believer in, in Christ as your path to the truth, the thing that I always get hung up on is how people, grown adults, grown, educated, um, seemingly intelligent adults get hung up on this, this figure of the devil. Like this Stephen kid was describing this red bean with the black marks on the face and stuff like that. That's your own inner demons. Those are your own inner fears and insecurities made manifest and given persona so you could more readily and easily deal with them. You know, people, <laughs> A lot of people are into angels and in a weird way if you were to ask me what my favorite angel is you know some people say Michael Raphael you're Lucifer why because he didn't he, he did his own thing um, we you know we have this idea that there was this heavenly war which kind of negates the fact that it could be heavenly anyways if war could exist there but who am I to who am I um, and that this, this being, this, this force, this Lucifer became Satan. And in reality, um, Satan, Lucifer, the beast, the devil, aren't all, if you start looking biblically and doing biblical research, aren't all references to the same thing. You know, Lucifer means the light bringer or the morning star, which was another way that in different biblical passages they referred to Christ. So if you're looking as at the Bible as a parable, 
regard, you know, setting the argument aside of whether or not Christ was an actual person who exists historically, which I think he probably was, and, and his teachings and messages were highly misconstrued. Um, but even so, it, it reads in a way that much makes much more sense if you look at the Christ aspect as the higher self and the devil, the tempter, the beast, the serpent as the ego. That there are two aspects to the same coin. And in many of the stories, when you start looking into maybe some of the you know, mystical Judaism, um, you know, Satan or Lucifer, who, not the same thing, um, but Lucifer, who was supposedly cast out, left by choice, left by choice um, to bring light to the world. And in a weird way, even if that was a, a malevolent force, we learn from our darkness. So by placing that, whether you want to think of it as, as ego or the devil or the shadow self or, you know, negativity, we learn from that. So it's doing the light a service. So how awful, how horrible could it be? Um, it's, it's, it's interesting when you just start looking at uh, Christianity in different ways and how it can be interpreted in so many different ways. So it'll be interesting to see what these what these figures do um, in the in the coming months, you know. Are they going to stop uh, you know, especially like with in the case of virtue. You know, is she going to stop making her card decks? You know, is she going to christianize her aspects? I hardly think that Hay House would be very thrilled with that and I hardly think that Hay House could make a lot of money with that because, you know, uh, unless you're um, you know, a leading figure of a church or Joel Olstein or Joyce Meyer and you're in the mega church industry, you know, I don't think there's a ton of money in it outside the tax breaks, but um, it'll be interesting to see what they do. Um, I, like I said, I was brought up Pentecostal and if I could go back and change it, I wouldn't change a thing because I learned a lot and I found my truth in other people's presentations of that truth. And um, even, even in spiritualism, you know, we can find instances of mediumship throughout the Old Testament and some things in the New Testament, and it just really boils down to respecting each other's path and respecting each other's belief system. So, um, I don't know, that's all I really wanted to rant about. It just kind of irritates me and kind of grinds my gears a bit when I see things like this happen, and, and like I said, it, it all comes back to knowing yourself. And, and being grounded in yourself and in your truth and knowing that regardless of what path you're on, be it the, the Jesus train or the New Age train or the spiritualist train or whatever, you are responsible for creating your own heaven or hell in this life or the afterlife. There is no magic wand. There is no fix-all. You can't meditate yourself better. You can't call in an angel to make everything magically smoothed out. You have to do the work. That's part of what we're here for. We're here to learn and engage and make mistakes and do things right and then make more mistakes and do more things right and change and evolve. That's another thing that I've always had issue with is, you know, I'm the same God today, yesterday, and tomorrow and forever. And it's like, why would I want to... I look at it as like macrochasm and microchasm, or microcosm, I'm sorry, you know, as above, so below, on earth as it is in heaven, this side, the spirit world, the material, the spiritual are all reflections or mirrors of each other on different scales. So if I'm continually growing, evolving, and changing, and I am God, or part of God, an extension of that source energy, would not that source, that universe, that spirit, in a general term, spirit with a capital S, also be growing and changing why would I want to worship something that is so rigid and demanding that there's no room for growth or compromise or understanding which further dovetails into depending on the issue of understanding or compassion um, you know having having compassion so you know that that's just another thing that doesn't make a lot of sense for me. I think as we grow and evolve, source, which we're all part of, grows and evolves. And if you're looking at it from a scientific perspective, the universe is constantly expanding as we are. And the universe doesn't have a, 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 um, a judgment on things, you know? Um, nature has elements of both dark and light. 
and we need to find that balance. So it's funny to me, um, you know, these people went from light in a new age scent of love and light and angels and sunshine and rainbows to light, the extreme end of light um, with the Christian path. And to me, the middle path is always my path. To be able to have one foot in this world, one foot in the next. One foot in the light, one foot in the dark. And there, true balance takes place. When we're in a balanced state, like water, the surface of a pond, when there's balance, it's smooth. And when it's smooth, it's reflective. And it's reflective, we can see, we can examine. And that's where new thoughts, new ideas, new growth comes from. So, again, nothing against any one path in particular. Um, but, the, you know, like I said, my friend sent me this this video. If you want to check it out, go to the 700 Club page. I kind of doubt a lot of you are already, uh, you know, friends or followers of the 700 Club page. But go and follow it and watch the video and, and see for yourself. I think it's very clear to see, you know, this, this, this individual um, sort of, to me, seems very lost still and, and, and lacking that sense of self. And, um, again doesn't matter what conclusion you come to as long as the conclusion feels right to you and you're not doing it from a place that's based in fear. So again, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your 4th of July weekend. Stay safe. Don't speed. There's lots of cops out. Um, and I see some people are just popping in now, but I'm getting ready to jump off here. So as soon as I hit the button, it'll be archived. Go back and watch it. Add your comments, anything that you want to include. Um, just remember, in regards to this, you know, Christ did say that you can do all things that I can do and even more so. So don't limit yourself. Don't, even if that is a path that is for you, don't let someone else dictate to you what that path needs to look like. It's very open to interpretation. And at the end of the day, no matter which direction you choose, it boils down to compassion, brotherhood, and I am a firm believer in doing unto others as you would have them to do unto you. And that doesn't mean capitalizing upon a new age industry and then demonizing it. So, um, yeah, just share your thoughts if you want to, but I just wanted to share that perspective. Have a good weekend, guys.